So I wanted to tell you about... Okay, so I wanted to tell you about some failures and successes because this is the first time I've used salt dough to make pottery and it is possible to make pottery. It's not easy because, you know, the salt makes the uh, flour act funny like Kayla uh, discovers. She's she found that it, it gets this the dough gets mushier and mushier and uh, actually more moist more moist so that's like a problem um so you kind of have to work fast and you got to do this in stages so over the weekend uh i had put um some salt dough in a small rice bowl and it turned out fine it was um in some ways it turned out fine it's really really hard i put it in the oven at 225 degrees anywhere from 200 to 250 is is used to dry it out we're not cooking anything we're just using the oven to dry it out How and long did you leave it in the oven? i left it in the oven for five hours because i was home you leave it in uh, the oven for as long as you can uh, be around to, to check on it, okay? If you have to go somewhere, turn off the oven. When you come back, just turn it on and continue the process. But you're dry using the oven as a dryer, as a drying machine. Um, I discovered something in that uh, when I took my salt dough out of the bowl this morning, I used cling wrap between the, the dough and the bowl. And it made it super easy to remove the salt dough. So I highly recommend that you do that. But the inside, the side that was in contact with the bowl was, it felt a little bit damp. And when it started to dry out, these cracks developed, okay? Because then it started drying out um, uh, and the before it was covered by plastic wrap. So then it developed these cracks. Do not worry about that uh, because you can actually add salt dough to this partially dried salt dough and it will stick. It will become a part of with the really wet uh, type of salt dough. You can add texture to it like I did here. So what I did was after I'm, let's say I form my, my jug, I form my, the two halves of my jug and I glue them together or I use salt dough to see if I can attach both sides together. If that doesn't work, okay, cause I haven't done that yet. Um, I would just use some sort of a glue like uh, Elmer's glue or, and maybe use some tape to hold it together temporarily. But when I put a thin layer of salt dough over this partially dried salt dough to create my texture, watch this, it sticks on. This is from this morning. It doesn't pop off. It becomes really quite attached to the previous layers. I can pinch to create texture. Um, I can use a plastic fork or a knife and I'm going to make those little Igbo uh, wedge marks right here on either side of my little uh, ridge that I just created by pinching. I can use a pencil and make holes to create textures. And not only am I creating textures, in creating my texture, I'm also creating pattern. So, in terms of surface decoration and getting the texture, you can do it with the, the salt dough by adding it later onto a more dry form. But what you're gonna to do today is going to create, I'll take you step by step to create the, the base forms. You have to create your base forms. And in order to select the bowl shape you need, um, you have to do your research. You have to stop and do your research and look into the pottery of a couple different cultures. You can look into the pottery of 
your own culture, if you're recently an Im immigrant, or the culture of your ancestors. You could do that if you would like to make a personal connection. Or you could say, I'm really interested in Japanese pottery. Let's say you're just a real fan of Japanese popular culture and you want to know more about Japanese pottery. Then you're going to go into research about that and find a piece that inspires you. But then you got to have some sort of a base form to build inside of because the salt clay will not, it will not stand up on its own. I found that it's very, very, uh, it does funny stuff. It attracts moisture from the air unless you dry it out at, at certain stages. And then you would build on top of uh, a dried layer and then put that in the oven again, dry it out again, like what you worked on that day. Next day, put some more on there and build it up slowly. It's not like you squish it all in and then you put it in the oven. It's not gonna work. Um, this morning, I tried to fill this whole bowl with salt dough and it didn't work. It started to all sag into the bowl and it just went all into the bottom. What you could do if your, uh, if your dough is overly uh, wet is to add uh, flour. So mine's feeling a little wet. Um, it's been sitting in here. It's, it's actually been about a week that I've had this. So, um, I said that I got this feeling that it was expanding, but it wasn't really expanding because it doesn't have, this does not have any, uh, what do you call it, leavening agent. It's just that it's absorbing water uh, from the air and the um, salt is, as the salt is kind of mixing with the water that we use to make the dough. So I just put some more flour in there and I'm going to just mix this flour in to reconstitute it and make it a little less sticky. I still want it to be a little bit sticky so that it would stick to itself uh, when I start making my coils. But yes, if your salt dough sits in a plastic bag or a, uh, or a lidded container, uh, the salt will melt and, you know, and, and mix with the water that's in, in the salt dough. And it also has this weird habit of attracting moisture to itself. And it's like, does it constantly? So. So are we gonna have to add flour every time we do this? Or every time we take it off the pan? I would say um, every once in a while. I don't think it's going to have to be every time, but it also, I also encourage you to work pretty quickly. And um, after you do, let's say we fill up a third of this container, we put it in the oven and we bake it so that it dries out and it doesn't have a chance to collapse. And then we put the next layer on, and it should be good, Kayla. We shouldn't have to put more flour on every single time. It's just if you find it overly mushy and it's just sticking to your hands, then that may not be that great. You don't want that. It's fine. Yes. Can we stick the clay on the outer part of the table? The problem with doing that uh Tajay, it's you right is that when when something dries it shrinks right and if it's on the outside it may crack bef and you know the actual it'll it'll shrink but then the bowl can't the bowl doesn't shrink right so then your pot will uh crack um unless you remove it at just the right point where it's still a little bit moist and, and it's not fully going to be uh, dry and then you try to just air dry it the rest of the way. Like I said, it's a little bit uh, temperamental, this, this dough. It's not like um, some other uh, oil-based sculpting mediums that are used in fine art. There are sculpting mediums that never dry that you use to uh, make sculptures. 
And then there's clay, which actually dries up very quickly on its own. Um, salt dough does dry in the air, but it's not as hard as, and dense like the particles of clay. So it's going to behave differently. All right, I just wanna make sure that I have fully incorporated the new flour in here so that it's um, a little bit less sticky. And I feel like there's still moisture in there, but and I can work it, but it's not overly sticky. Okay, so we're good. And then I'm gonna store it in the container. If it's still a little wet, what you could do is add more flour or leave it out. Do not, I mean, like, do not put the lid on the container. Just, just put it in the container, but leave the lid off while you're working on it for a while. Okay, I'm just cleaning up the, the counter here and picking up all of the salt. Okay, I mean, all of the flour. So that's that. If you notice, my container has like a little pour spout area so it's not a perfect bowl shape so what i did is i just filled it in with some salt dough to try to make it look like more of a true round hemisphere shape so i'm going to make my bowl or my pot and it's going to be like a water jug it's going to be like a circle with a neck with a sphere with a neck and a little rim so it's going to be some sort of a jug form I got my plastic wrap and I'm going to tear two pieces. For some reason, there was a big run on plastic wrap, so there was no regular plastic wrap at my at my grocery grocery store. There was just this weird sticky plastic wrap. So I have to just work with it. It's like a sticker. And it's probably going to make all kinds of weird wrinkles. So I'm just trying to smooth it down as best as I can. And it's not reaching all the way around. So I'm gonna to have to use, lay two pieces on top of each other. But this plastic wrap will allow me to remove the bowl really, really easily because it's just kind of like a layer in between. But I want to make sure that there's no air bubbles and that it's sticking really, really close right onto the wall. Because this, this is like some sort of a funny plastic wrap, it's just it's not normal. Okay. okay. So now I want to put um, another piece. Here we go. So I want to put another, there's one piece going this way, I'm going to put another piece going the opposite way to make sure it's fully covered uh, and that there's enough that it goes um, down the sides a little bit. So if you don't have plastic wrap, uh, don't use aluminum foil uh, if you have some um, wax paper, uh, see if you can use some wax paper. If your container is thin and it's plastic, don't worry about plastic wrap Um All you have to do is after you uh, bake your piece, if it's a thin enough plastic container, you could just squeeze the sides a little bit, gently, gently, and it'll break the air seal between your clay and the bowl. And then if you turn it around, if you turn it over like this, it'll pop right out. So if you have a thin plastic container, um, you're in good shape. If it's a metal one like this, even though this is not that heavy, I don't think I have the strength to flex it. So that's why I'm using the plastic wrap to, to remove my work after I bake it. So now my bowl is completely covered in plastic wrap. Okay. Uh, remember, we're going to add more clay or more salt dough to the outside. So don't worry if your plastic wrap leaves, you know, marks or wrinkles. You're going to you're going to cover over that with a layer. Can I use a glass bowl? Yes, you can use a glass bowl. 
but when you put it in the oven, make sure that you put it in there right from the beginning so that it heats up with the oven. You know, you don't want to just like stick it in there when it's too, well, too, 200, like I said, isn't that bad. But I would just stick it in there right from the beginning, okay? You want... The glass bowl and plastic rack too. You can, well, yeah, you have to do that too, just in case um, you have a hard time removing it. The glass bowls, if it's Pyrex, it's fine. But if you don't know if it's Pyrex, then I would put it in while the oven is going up to temperature. It's going up to that 200 degrees so that it also warms up slowly with your, um, with your oven. Because I'm always afraid that um, with glass, there's always you know, concerns about thermal shock. Some glass um, does not like rapid changes in temperature. So what I'm doing is I made my half inch coil and um, somebody said in my last class uh, uh, that their salt dough was too sticky. If your salt dough is too sticky, add more flour. You don't have to add more salt, add more flour. If your salt dough is way too um, dry and it doesn't hold together, Add a little, sprinkle a little bit of water from a bowl. Get a little bowl of water and sprinkle it and work it into your dough a little bit at a time. So I have my little spiral here and I'm going to press it into the bottom of my little bowl. And I'm going to just use a little bit of pressure to press it onto the bottom and the plastic wrap. Okay. And then I'm going to take my other piece here and just start coiling and building up my coils to about a one third. And then I'm going to put that in the oven because if you get ambitious and you do too much, it's just going to sink and just slump down. So you don't want that. So that's about half an inch. And as you're handling it, if your salt dough is too wet, it's going to kind of pull and get skinnier. So just be, be careful of that. And if, it, if that happens, just put some more salt dough right on top of the coil. For now, I'm just pressing, you can see, I'm pressing my new layer, the inside of the coil right on top of, so it overlaps the previous coil layer, just so that they make a connection. So use your finger and just press it, press it on there, just so that the, it, there's a connection. You don't want to just leave it because that's not going to connect if you just leave it. Just know we also added more flour so it's not as wet, so it may not make that connection if you don't put the, if you don't press down a little bit. Okay, so I just press down. So I'm going to continue using my dough and then work up to about one third of the way up the side of the bowl. And then I'm gonna stop, put it in the oven. Make sure that you have permission, make sure your parents know. And what you don't wanna do is you don't wanna forget about it. Okay, so I'm gonna add another coil here. Okay. And I'm pressing the new coil uh, down onto the previous coil and just do the same thing I did before to connect the new coil to the uh, you know the old layers of salt dough okay you you don't want the you don't want this to be thin you don't want what you're building in here to be thin you want it to be at least at least a quarter of an inch thick when you take it out of the bowl um, because the thinner it is, more, the more delicate it is, and it's gonna crack. And if it's something this heavy and it cracks, it's no problem. It's still holding together. And then we could just fill in those cracks later when we put our texture on. But um, be aware, don't, don't squeeze so hard and press so hard that you make it uh, paper thin. And just know thinner is not always better when you're working with salt dough or even clay, because um, you need the, the strength from, 
you know, how thick the, the coil is. Okay, Kimlin, is that you? Okay, you want me to look at your clay? Okay, let me see. Okay, it looks good. It looks good. Yeah. Um, what what you could do is you could start over again, or you can add more on top. So that's your there. Yeah, those are that's those are your two choices. If you make your walls a little too thin, if you pressed a little too hard. Taking it out. Um, I would keep. Well, if you want to make it even higher, you're saying. Is that what you're saying, yeah. Charlotte? Um, hmm. If you want to make it higher, yes, you can uh, tape a piece of cardboard like around the edge of it, and I'll show you how to make an extension. Okay. 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 That way you can go higher than the bowl. Okay. I, I think that's what you're saying. This piece was actually a part of this part of the bowl. And why it's in two pieces, I'll, I'll let tell you right now, because I did a very dumb thing. So the salt dough stuck to my cardboard extension. I should have put a layer of plastic wrap. Cardboard is stuck on there, and it's just not worth my time to try to peel it off and then glue it onto this. So I'm just starting over again. But um, I basically used uh, a box from the post office and I cut it with a box cutter and scissors and I scored it with some vertical lines so that it would smoothly um, wrap around my bowl. I got this box from the uh, post office for free. I stole it and <laughs> it's just, they give it out for free for, well, for priority mail because priority mail is expensive and they want you to use that expensive shipping. So I just took it and I'm just using a ruler and figuring out how much higher I want the walls of this bowl to be. Score the paper. And what I'm doing is I'm just cutting a little bit through the cardboard, not all the way. So don't like, don't, you know, get too strong with this or you're going to cut all the way through and then you're going to have little pieces of cardboard left. I'm just creating a cardboard extension basically of my bowl if I want more height. So I'm just going down the line and making a score mark about every half inch or so. The side that you didn't score is going to be the inside. The, the side that you scored with the box cutter or the knife. Remember scoring is only cutting part of the way through the cardboard. You're just weakening it. So now you see what it does. It gives you a smoother wrap, wrap around curve. This needs to be taped onto here first, and then the cling wrap has to cover that, continue covering the inside of the walls of your extension as well, and then everything will be beautiful. Okay, so it's almost like real clay in that there are certain things that you can do with the salt dough when it's wet, and certain things that you can do when it's um, a little bit drier and, and set up. So I'm going to put in another, like another layer right over here. Yes. Can you have a picture of one of those finished pieces so I can see? One of the finished pieces? I don't have a finished piece. I have my like, samples. Yeah, so like that's how it should look after like... No. <laughs> <laughs> this is just a sample with, of texturing. Um, I don't have a fully finished piece that's a piece of pottery, no. Um, so every layer, we put it in the oven for three hours and then another layer three hours. And then basically at the third layer, do we put the whole pot again for another three hours for it to be fully done? Or after the third layer, would we like just put the dry up and that's enough? Well, it's just, you're just putting it in the oven to set it up, uh, to dry it up just so that you can put more layers on top. And then you could start to, you can take it out and you can start putting uh, some more of this wet 
uh, wet clay or this moist clay on top to smooth that smooth out the outside of your pot. And design is the same. Yep, this is the same exact salt dough. When it's a little bit moist, it's a darker color. But when it's fully dry, like right here for some reason, the inside right here, um, it's really light. It's kind of glittery because of the salt crystals. So I've started the bottom here. This is good. I think I'm going to just put maybe one or two layers and then stop. And I know it's very tempting to keep going and try to get as much done as possible, but it's only going to collapse if you do that. Just firm up and dry up this, um, this bottom couple of rows. And yes, you could continue and stick wet salt dough onto dry, already dry salt dough and continue building up after you have put it in the oven. If you decide to, at the end of all this and at the end of texturing and all this work, if you want to paint it, you can use temper paint, acrylic paint. Acrylic paint is probably better because it makes your piece a little bit more waterproof um, in case somebody spills something on there. But, um, Acrylic paint, any kind of paint will cover over the salt crystals so that you won't be able to see the sparkle of the salt crystals anymore. But, you know, it depends on what you want. You should do what you want. So this is my last little row here and I'm just installing it on there. Oop. I wish I could show you, but I can't show, I can't do this and show it at that angle. So I just laid it in there. And then I'm just pushing my new layer very gently uh, and overlapping it a little bit around the edges where it meets the previous layer, just so that they adhere to one another. So I've got about that much done. It is definitely less than half. Um, so I'm gonna just stop right here and I will put this in the oven. So this class is, um, let's see, it's over, I believe at 150. 150. So this class is over. I'm going to let you guys go to a period.